What's going on guys? Zers here. And today, and actually the next couple of videos, I'm going to be doing a couple of screencast videos in order to test the quality of this new microphone I have. So, if you guys don't see my face for the next couple of videos, that is the reason why. So, today I want to take some time out to chat about criticisms of Jordan B. Peterson and how I find a lot of them to be quite lacking in substance I think is the best way to put it I'm gonna go over a couple of different videos I've seen of people talking about Jordan Peterson and a couple of comments and general things I've heard in opposition to Peterson and the reason why I want to go through all of this is because it's not that I don't think that Jordan Peterson can be criticized in fact, it's quite the opposite. I, I absolutely think that he can and should be criticized. And I do think that there are some legitimate criticisms to call out, to call Peterson out on. However, a lot of the different criticisms that I've been hearing in a couple of these videos have been, at least in my opinion, very lacking in substance and, and very lacking in an honest rebuttal or an honest, uh, I guess, opposition to any of Peterson's points or mainstays. Um, a lot of the criticisms I've seen in videos lately have been very philosophically wishy-washy or kind of hinges more on just philosophical concepts most laymen people will not understand or even approach in all honesty. There's not really a lot of people tackling the meat or of what Peterson is saying. Now there are some videos that are doing this that I'm going to chat about so don't worry, I'm going to bring this up in a second, but I just kind of want to lay the groundwork. I don't think that Jordan P. Peterson should never be criticized. I just think that a lot of the criticisms I've been hearing or have heard are just a little weak and kind of lack any real grit to them. I want to start this video off by going over some of the more legitimate criticisms I find of Jordan Peterson. And one of, I think, one of the best criticisms of Jordan Peterson that kind of bothers me a lot too is the fact that whenever he is asked a question that he is not too keen on answering, he usually dances around the question, or he will return a question back to the interviewer or the person who asked him the question originally, and then lead them with a series of his own questions into answering what he wants to answer, rather than giving a direct response to what he was talking about before, what was asked before. And probably one of the best examples I could find on the internet is when he was asked about his belief in God or when he was not even asked, but more the, I think the interviewer kind of implied it or brought up the topic. And I'll, I can show you exactly what I mean right now. So people often ask me, do you believe in God? Which I don't, I don't like that question. First of all, it's an attempt to, to, it's an attempt to box me in, in a sense. And the reason that it's an attempt to box me in is because the question is asked so that I can be firmly placed on one side of a two, of a binary argument. And, and the reason I don't like to answer it is because A, I don't like to be boxed in, and B, because I don't know what the person means by believe or God. And they think they know. And the probability that they construe belief and construe God the same way I do is virtually zero. So, it's, it's a question that doesn't work for me on multiple levels of analysis, but, but f strangely enough, just as we were talking, I, the answer to that question popped into my head. I act as if God exists. Now, you can decide for yourself whether that means whether, that I believe in Him, so to speak. But I act as if He exists. So, that's a good enough answer for that. Then with regards to these other issues, the divinity of Christ, well, I would say the same problems with the question formulation obtain. What do you mean by divine? And also, what do you mean by Christ? These are very, very difficult questions. Now, I believe that, for all intents and purposes, I believe that the Logos is divine. Insofar as we, if, if by divine you mean of ultimate value, of ultimate transcendent value, yes, it's divine. Now, the reason why I say that this is probably one of the more legitimate criticisms of Jordan Peterson is because, one, his habit of dancing around questions he doesn't want to answer can be kind of annoying to listen to sometimes when you want a more direct response. However, on the flip side, I can say that it is interesting to ask what the interviewer means or to ask the interviewer to define their terms to get a better answer. So it can go one of two ways. You can either go on the approach that he's asking for clarification because... 
he wants a more direct answer, he wants to give you a more detailed answer, or it can go to the wishy-washy way that he wants to avoid alienating anyone. Uh, specifically with the clip I've shown you, it does seem like, or I think it's easy to come to the conclusion that Jordan Peterson is erring on, he doesn't want to alienate any of his rationalist, so-called, you know, atheist, so-called part of his audience. Because one thing I've noticed, especially on my time on YouTube, is whenever you come out as a religious person or say that you do believe in God, a lot of people who are atheists in your audience will get upset and they will pull support for you. This happened to me many times throughout the years. So it could be possible that Jordan Peterson is wishy-washy on religion because he doesn't want to alienate Christians or he doesn't want to alienate atheists. And that's why he doesn't define himself. As he says in his clip, he did say that. Or it could be interpreted that he has a lack of conviction in his thoughts and his opinions and he's scared to alienate one side, you know, or he's, he has such a lack of conviction that he doesn't want to appeal, uh, he doesn't want to appear less rational than what he actually is. He's afraid of looking foolish for saying that he believes in the divine or the supernatural and he will lose his support of lay rationalists or he will lose the respect of these so-called rationalist people or rational thinking people. So he avoids the topic altogether. It could be possible and you could interpret it that way, which is why I think it's fair to critique him on this and to ask him this and, and to try to figure out how he honestly feels. And I do think it's very clear, at least in my opinion, that he is not a religious person, or at the very least, he's not a Christian, um, based on much of what he says, and I will explain this more as the video goes on, but I do think that this is a point to bring up, not just his wishy-washy views on religion, but on the way he dances around questions. That is kind of annoying. Uh, I wish I could find more clips of him doing this. I'm pretty sure I could if I really looked, but I mean, I really don't want to, if I'll be honest with you. Now, on the topic of what I find to be some more legitimate criticisms of Jordan Peterson, I would be remiss to not mention that I, I always found how he disinvited Faith Goldie's uh, speaking position at one of his conventions to be a right cowardly move and to pan this out I will say I do like Jordan Peterson by the way but I think that this was cowardly I don't think that this was the right approach to go with um and this is echoed by uh Mr. Matoker now Jim I, I have a very I have a lot of interesting things to say about Jim but his video when he talks about the fans of Jordan Peterson is a really good segue because I'm going to take a step back and talk about the criticisms of his fans and then wrap us up by just getting back on the Jordan Peterson. But I will say that the opening of Jim's video when he talks about Jordan Peterson and his fans, I think kind of really sums up a couple of the points that I really do find to be legitimate, that I do think are reasonable to critique, and here they are. I learned that lesson the hard way. I made the mistake of answering somebody when they said, hey, what are your thoughts on Jordan Peterson? Do you watch anything by Jordan Peterson? Fuck no. I'm not going to watch some fucking leaf tell me about uh, self-actualization like I need a therapist. Oh my god, Jordan Peterson, so enlightened, he told me to make my bed. They did not like that. Or the follow-up points that I brought up later on, like paying $10 for a personality quiz is fucking retarded. Or that Peterson makes a shitload of money. Or that him disinviting Faith Goldie from a free speech panel was kind of a bitch move. Now, while I don't share Jim's candor you can say. I certainly do completely understand why he feels the way he feels. It's certainly very simplified to say that Jordan Peters that Jordan Peterson's message is simply cleaning up your room. I mean it's a little bit more robust than that. But if Jim feels that he is not an individual who would benefit from someone talking about self actualization and creating guidelines for yourself and rules for yourself, then I think that that's totally fine. He should be able to say that. Um, again, like I said about the whole Faith Goldie thing, I mean, I wouldn't put it in the way that Jim puts it, but certainly I do agree that I don't think that that was the right decision for Peterson to make. However, things kind of get a little weird in the middle section of Jim's video. And he starts talking about the fans of Jordan Peterson. And I think he's mostly right about a lot of fandoms he's talked about before. But in some of the clips he shows us earlier, in some of the comments he reads us earlier, I just don't find much substance in bringing them up or complaining about them. Uh, 
In fact, I'll give you a really good example right here. Call you Zer. You are the Rosa Parks of your time. I've actually seen Jordan is saving Western civilization coming from a few. He is saving it. Admittedly, he's not doing it single-handedly, but he is one of the most important people in the effort to save the West. Who cares how it sounds? The content of Jordan Peterson seems to be doing some amazing things, and if it's helping people, eventually he might be considered a prolific figure in history. Daddy, who's that statue to? Well, son, that's to Jordan, savior of Western civilization. He told those troons, no, I'm only going to refer to you by your genitals. But Daddy, don't we live under a caliphate? That's not important, son. At least I don't have to use proper pronouns. Now let's go pray to Allah. Now, the reason why these two comments stick out to me is because they were not the most pretentious or even the most sycophantic of comments that Jim will show later in the video. Um, it does get worse from here, but these two comments made here uh, really indicate that these people think very highly of Jordan Peterson. And if the point Jim is implying is people think too highly of Jordan Peterson because... Well, he doesn't really explain why he doesn't think that people should think too highly of him. More so, he implies it because he just doesn't think that the advice Peterson gives out is kind of worthy of the merit. Uh, he doesn't say that, but I can I assume that's what it is. Uh, this is kind of really my problem with it is the fact that I have to do a lot of assuming that this is why Jim doesn't like the fact that these people think so highly of Jordan Peterson. I mean, granted, sure, maybe it might be saying too much that Jordan Peterson might become a prolific person in the future. I mean, maybe it's saying too much that Jordan Peterson might become a famous person in history or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, this in our contemporary society, there are lots of people who become famous and etch-a-sketched in our societal history when they don't really do much or kind of add much, I mean, this is just, I mean, think about celebrity culture in, in general. There are lots of people who are famous actors and actresses who just kind of act in movies. And acting is, is, I mean, it's a tough job and it's cool and everything, but they're not really doing much of anything other than performing in movies. And as cool as it is, that's, that's what they're doing. And people will remember them. I mean, Michael Jackson was a singer. Again, he didn't really do anything politically in terms of history but people remember him if people remember jordan peterson after he dies for all of the different books and lectures he's had it really wouldn't be anything different from just the regular celebrity culture we have right now i think the only difference is that there's more philosophical i have to say maybe substance to what jordan peterson is saying uh, i guess i can't really take that away from art because i mean there's a lot you can get from art and movies and whatnot and, you know uh, but at the same time i just can't see what is special about Jordan Peterson here? What's special about Jordan Peterson's fans thinking very highly of him that you cannot imply onto any other famous person ever? Uh, if Jim doesn't think that Peterson is worthy of this, I mean, okay, that's his opinion, but his fans aren't really special in this regard. So I guess you can't really criticize Jordan Peterson's fans for being what fans are. I mean, I guess you're not really, they're not really special. You're not really criticizing them for being with Jordan Peterson because then you would just have that criticism for celebrity culture in general. So this is kind of why these two comments kind of stick out to me, because, I mean, these people, they weren't really even rude. Um, they just seem to think very highly of Jordan Peterson, and Jim doesn't think that you should, but I don't really see how this is any different problem from celebrity culture in general. So that's kind of really the point. This is why I'm saying that I don't really think that this is even uh, a, a criticism that has much weight on Peterson in particular. Now, I want to take a step back in the earlier in Jim's video where he talks about, or where he mocks <laughs> the fans of Jordan Peterson with um, these statements here. I've dedicated their life to. They are daddy issues, dude edition. They're like that drunk chick at the bar that thinks she fell in love because some asshole happened to glance at her sideways. All because her father left the family when she was like five. They're looking for that authority figure, the substitute authority figure that will come into their lives and sort their shit out. A common trait among millennials with so many broken homes. They are completely in love. They have a fanatical devotion and say some of the most absurd shit because some grown man told them to wash their balls once a day. Because apparently they can't function on a daily basis without somebody telling them the most basic common sense shit. Now, for the very obvious comment that will come where someone will explain to me that Jim is being purposefully inflammatory because he's an entertainer and he wants to make you all laugh, I, I just want to pause to say... Oh, really? Thanks for the newsflash. I mean, obviously, obviously that this is what this is what Jim is doing. But uh, I, I think that 
his commentary still does have a lot of truth or it, it very clearly has his honest opinion on how he feels about these people here he genuinely feels that these people are looking for some type of father figure in order to emulate and look after now the reason why i don't really like this criticism of his fan base is because it says nothing particular about Jordan Peterson fans other than they want the structure that Jordan Peterson gives them. Now, you're probably really confused by that. Here's the thing. Human beings in general look towards people to emulate. They look towards people to try to be like. And Jordan Peterson, again, as a famous person, is not special in this regard. This is just... This is just the human experience. The truth of the matter is, if if you want to look no further than the fact that people desire to imitate individuals they see, look at Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian has many imitators, many women on Instagram who try to emulate the, the body that Kim Kardashian has with plastic surgery, with some kind of exercising, with a bunch of waist training, a whole bunch of jazz. Some women go for go the the distance to try their best to look like kim kardashian in fact as i show you this woman you probably would think that this is kim kardashian unless you pay a lot of attention to kim but it's not it's it's actually a totally different woman that's literally trying to emulate the way kim kardashian looks and the reason why I bring this all up is because it's just very simple human nature to look for role models and people to try to emulate yourself after that pointing out that these people do not have fathers in their lives and thus they look uh, for Jordan Peterson to give them the structure that they need is not really telling me much of anything about these people that they have any control over. Um, if they didn't have a good father in their life, they didn't choose to do anything about that. That's just kind of circumstance. And of course, people get made fun of for stuff that's out of their control all the time. I mean, if you are born goofy looking like you have big ears or whatnot, or if you're short, people are going to make fun of you for it. I mean, yeah, people will make fun of you for stuff that's not in your control. But as a criticism of Jordan Peterson's fans, you're just kind of more critiquing fan culture in general than you're critiquing the fans of Jordan Peterson, because there's nothing about what these people are doing that are special on to Jordan Peterson, other than the fact that they want the structure in their life. But as far as emulating people, as far as trying to become like someone they admire, there, there's nothing special here. This is just the natural order of human beings in general. Now, some of you are probably wondering why am I uh, picking on, on Jim as if I could be picking on him. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about Jim is because I think it's one of the videos I remember best. But also a video I think that really highlights the points I want to make the best as well. I just think he's a really good example of how the critiques of Jordan Peterson's fan base are not really substantial because they can just kind of be applied to fan bases in general. So it's, it's not really it's not really even a point against Jordan Peterson's fan base at all to say that some of them are militant and, and, and crazy or some of them look up to Jordan Peterson as a father figure. Now again, this is something that's brought up against Jordan Peterson by a couple of people, not just Jim. Uh, the Amazing Atheist in one of his videos also brings this up as a point as to why he has a sort of a disdain for Jordan Peterson, among other things. And in fact, TJ Kirk decided that he's going to create an ebook that uh, he's going to release on YouTube where he rebuts most of what Jordan Peterson says. And it's not available at the time I made this video, but the truth of the matter is I'm probably going to invest it in and read what TJ, or I guess listen to what TJ Kirk has to say, because I'm very interested in it. Because the next video I'm going to go over, I think more than anything, kind of really shows just a, a, a complete lack of real substantial criticism against Peterson. Now I want to move on to the last video that actually inspired me to make this video to begin with. Well, actually one half. The other half that inspired me to make this video was TJ Kirk, but I'll probably be talking about him in the end. Now Cold of Dusty made a 20 minute video where he talks about Jordan Peterson, and I think this video more than anything encapsulates or highlights what I mean by a complete lack of substance when it comes to critiquing or rebutting Jordan Peterson. Cold of Dusty highlights this to a T. Traditional conservative ideas about casual sex. This means rejecting, among other things, the misbegotten idea of casual sexual gratification. Sex is either the impulsive, short-term gratification of a domineering biological instinct or the union of two conscious spirits taking responsibility for what they are doing. The former is simply not commensurate with the demands of an advanced civilization, which requires the adoption of responsibility above all for its preservation, maintenance, and expansion. That's right, folks. Casual sex is bad. 
conservatism is the new punk rock. Now, of course, my bias here, if you have been subscribed to my channel for a while, is that I really am not a fan of casual sex, and I really do think that most people should think complexly about the individuals that they're going to have sex with. So obviously, I'm going to err on the side of Jordan Peterson on this topic. However, the point that I want to make here from Dusty is that instead of actually critiquing what Peterson said, and instead of actually arguing with anything Peterson says, all he does is he just mocks his point with a mocking tone. Who also has some really fucking stupid ideas about makeup and sexual harassment in the workplace. We don't know what the rules are. Like, what? here's a rule. Don't, don't How about you... no makeup in the workplace? If, if you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah. Okay. I do think that. Now, first off, even if I can see that the only reason women wear makeup in the workplace is to look more physically attractive. Here's the thing. If you were to not concede that point, or if you were to pretend that this is not probably more than 70, if not 75% of the reason as to why women are wearing makeup in any scenario ever, then you have such profound ignorance on the psyche of women that you should probably stop talking about it because this is just silly. These women are wearing makeup in order to appear more attractive. Or at the very least, they are wearing makeup in order to cover up spots that they don't find attractive or spots that they don't find appealing. They are putting on makeup to try to look better than what they, at the very least, think that they are. To pretend that this is not the truth is just silly. But here's the problem. Jordan Peterson's point, especially in the interview and his overall point on makeup, is that makeup is an indication of sexual arousal. A lot of how when a lot of how women put their makeup on at the very least uh, is an indication of sexual arousal. The way that they put blush on their cheeks, the way that they put red lipstick on, is usually them emulating what an aroused female looks like. And so that tease of looking like they are aroused by the men around them is inviting sexual attention to them. And this is Peterson's point. Now, Cold of Dusty may not have understood Peterson's point. Peterson's point being that if you're going to put on makeup to make yourself look attractive and invite sexual attention, and then be upset when you obtain that sexual attention is hypocrisy. I don't know, maybe Dusty just wasn't paying attention. Maybe Dusty's just not that smart. Who knows? But the fact is, Dusty is not going to actually critique what Peterson is saying. He's going to create some fiction in his mind and argue with that. That still, in no way possible, makes them hypocritical for not wanting to be sexually harassed. First off, many women would prefer not to wear makeup in the workplace to begin with. Some of them feel compelled to because if they don't, they are punished in the male-dominated work environment they find themselves in. In these places, for the most part, men have set the rules. And oftentimes, looking more physically attractive is actually expected of them. They're taken more seriously and they can't really compete with the other men or other physically attractive women unless they do that. Secondly, even if they only were wearing makeup to be more physically attractive, you have no idea who they are being physically attractive for. For all you know, they could have got gussied up to look better for the UPS guy or the cute lesbian chick that works in the mailroom. You have no idea what's going on in their mind. So to pretend like this in any way makes them hypocritical for not wanting to be sexually harassed makes you a fucking dick. Peterson continuously claims that in the workplace, we don't know what the rules are, but we do know what the rules are. Most HR departments have laid the rules out very clearly and there is such. If someone is making you feel uncomfortable in the workplace, it is on you to let that person know that their behavior makes you feel uncomfortable. And then once you've done that, if they continue to make you feel uncomfortable, you escalate that by taking your complaints to the HR department. This is a one-size-fits-all solution that pretty much fits every case. What Peterson was saying in that interview is that it's hard to navigate what you can and can't do between men and women in the workplace. And if you want to argue that maybe it's not as complex as Peterson is saying, I can totally agree with you because I think it's really easy to say that you shouldn't be smacking women on the butt in the office. I think we can all agree on that. But at the same time, it is important to note that simply saying that a female co-worker looks attractive one day can be considered sexual harassment. And that might be a little too much. Now, again, this would be something fair to argue about Peterson with and fair to chat with Peterson about, but it's not the approach that Dusty makes. Instead, it's all about character assassination and trying to make Peterson look worse when really you could actually criticize what Peterson is saying here and try to have some type of argument or counterpoint to it.
Now the truth of the matter is, we could be here all day and all night, where I just kind of go through every point that Dusty makes and explains just how nonsensical it is and how he's taking Peterson way out of context in order to spin a narrative and make him look worse than what he already is. But I'm pretty sure anyone who watches Dusty video already can come to that conclusion for themselves, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it at that and encourage you to check it out for yourself. Here's the ultimate point, and the ultimate point for much of what I've been saying in this video is that I think that there are some really good and fair criticisms of Jordan Peterson. In fact, I'm about to watch an hour-long presentation where I think someone actually might have some merit to what they're going to say against Peterson. I'm really interested in seeing that. However, a lot of the videos that I have seen so far have just <laughs> lacked a lot of substance. Now, Mr. Matoker, Jim, is more of a troll and a comedian, and more for the entertainment aspect, so I can't really take his criticisms much to heart. However, I think that this is a huge disservice to most of his channel in general. And if you want to know what I mean by that, just ask me in the comment section and I'll tell you. However, when it comes to School of Dusty and the later TJ Kirk book where he talks about Jordan Peterson, I don't find much of anyone actually criticizing how Jordan Peterson honestly feels about anything more so than they're criticizing fictions in their mind or criticizing stuff that doesn't really matter in the grander scheme of what Jordan Peterson is saying in not only in his books but in most of his lectures. So the ultimate point is, I think it's alright to criticize Jordan Peterson. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but what I am saying is that there should be some merit and some substance into what you're trying to say. Because a lot of these videos now just kind of look like they're just trying to be contrarian for the sake of being contrarian rather than them actually looking and listening to what Peterson is saying and debunking that and giving us a different view of the world. I have to wait and see what TJ Kirk has to produce, so we'll probably revisit this topic sometime in the future. It all depends on him, really. So that being said, man, I still hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, man, go and click the like button. And shoot, go and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below, and as always, you guys have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.